All right, what's happening, everyone? We'll give everybody a few minutes here to hop on, uh, and then we'll get cranking into uh, what we're going to talk about today. Um, been kind of trying to find a few things to dig into. We're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna do some future talks on um, money and some other things that uh, seem to be topics that keep coming up inside the training. Uh, hopefully we'll have a decent sized group here today and we'll have a little bit of fun. Uh, for any of you that don't know who I am, uh, my name is Corey Long. I am the founder of Digital Storefronts and Marketing with a Mission and Y Rock Consulting and I don't know, two or three other companies that we own now. Uh, we just started another business literally three or four weeks ago. <laughs> So as a serial entrepreneur, I, this is kind of what I do. So I know we have some people on here that are from our groups. I know we have some people on here that are uh, new to me and new to what we do. And so I just want to welcome you and um, let you know a little bit about uh, who I am. Uh, just to give you an idea, I spent about 17 years uh, in full-time ministry. We worked in youth college. Uh, children's home work. I uh, ran a place called Carpenter Place, which is a all girls children's home for a few years before we stepped away from all that craziness uh, to try to figure out a way to do ministry without taking a paycheck. That's what started us down this journey of doing what we do now. And um, I am sitting in my motor home. We're sitting in Branson, Missouri right now. Um, and so we're, uh, we're kind of living in creating the life that we want, which if you would have asked me seven or eight years ago, I would have told you that's not possible, um, that you can't just create the lifestyle you want. Um, but uh, I'm here to tell you, I'm proof of that, that you can't, you can truly create the lifestyle you want. Uh, and the main thing is knowing what you want. Uh, and that's kind of what I found is, is it's much more about knowing what you want and then finding a vehicle for you to get there. Um, and so out of all of those ministry years, we figured out a way now to be able to go and travel and do ministry work. And we've been invited back to Glorietta Adventure Camps this summer to help them. We've been invited back to a church in Angel Fire this summer to help them. Uh, we're about to head to um, St. Louis area to help with a... Um, I don't, I don't wouldn't call it a church plant. It's a church that's been there for a little bit of time now uh, that a student of ours actually is a part of, and uh, he's invited us up. So we're going to go and see if we can't uh, help them for a little bit. Uh, and then, um, yeah, I don't know what all else is going to be planned uh, for this upcoming summer. So uh, exciting times for sure. So today, and for any of you that have never been on one of these, uh, these are kingdom mandate calls. These are calls that we do um, periodically. I, we try to do them about once a month. And um, they're basically calls for me to be able to uh, dig back into what I have done for ever, it feels like, uh, ministry work, and apply that to um, our lives and, and specifically to business. Um, not a whole lot of other, not that we found anyway, not a whole lot of other groups or workshops or uh, types of, of webinars out there that do kind of what we do uh, within these calls. And so I hope you get something out of it today. We're going to dig into uh, 2 Kings 6. Uh, I would be curious, like drop in chat, like where are you from? Because I know we've got a pretty wide variety of people on uh, today. So just drop in the chat box, like where are you from? Uh, so we can kind of see who all's here. It looks like we've got 20 plus on the call. Um, I know we've got some on here that I've seen that are familiar faces to me, and then we've got others that I don't know who you are, and that's great. Uh, we love having people that um, that are new. Let's see here if I can remove that. Oh, looks like we got people from all over the place. Nice. California, Texas, Tennessee, Florida, Kentucky. Illinois, Wisconsin. Hey, Valerie. and not seen you in a while. Virginia, Arkansas. Hey, guys, I tell you, March Madness. Man, I stayed up late last night. Tech let me down, broke my heart last night. <laughs> That's they horrible, did. horrible experience. No, they did really well. Uh, California, Colorado, San Francisco. Nice. So here's the deal. Uh, we're going to look at 
uh, a story that some of you may or may not have heard uh, today. And then we're going to dig in a little bit about um, kind of some of the things that we're going to draw out of the story personally, and then also draw some biblical principles um, out of that story too, to be able to uh, see if we can't uh, apply those to our business and specifically any of you that are looking to do kind of like what I do. Uh, if you're looking at being an entrepreneur, uh, if you are in one of my programs and you're starting your business or you've owned your business for a while now, uh, or if you are just looking at this as going, hey, I'm kind of curious. Uh, bottom line is, is, is we can create the lifestyle we want. Um, the fact that we're not taught that or taught the things that really have become invaluable to me the last few years as far as just living life um, uh, and, and working as an entrepreneur, it, it's, it's crazy to me. In fact, Florida, I don't know if y'all saw this, but Florida just uh, passed, I think he's trying to pass a law to where if you are graduate high school, you've got to actually go through and learn some actual skills. Amazing, right? You're going to actually learn about finances. Uh, which is what you got to deal with the rest of your life. And so it's kind of weird to me that we live in a world where we aren't taught any of the things that we actually really truly need uh, out of school, but, uh, but it is what it is, right? Uh, and so we get a chance uh, to do that now. And, and I, I asked a question inside of our group not too long ago about uh, money. Like, how did you learn about money? Uh, how did you learn about finances? And, and guys, man, I'm, I'm 47. I, I still almost on a monthly basis, at least, sometimes on a weekly basis, I learned something that I did not know about finances, taxes, business, um, because I'm constantly trying to figure out how to, how to use the time that I have. We all have the same amount of time, right? So it's not a matter of having more time. Uh, it's not a matter of those. It's a matter of bringing more value to the time that we have. Um, and so to me, I want to make sure that I'm bringing the most value to the time that I have and then using that time to be able to go bless, serve, and give to others. All right, uh, I am going to share my screen here, and we are going to jump into this. All right, so this is, um, if you guys have not went back and studied Elisha, man, there's so many great stories. There's so much content. There's so much meat. Um, especially if you're doing uh, any kind of Bible study or anything like that. I used uh, not this particular story that we're going to talk about today or stories, uh, but I used um, Elisha uh, two summers ago. I'd filled in at a church for about a month and a half, and we every Sunday morning with the adult class, we'd go through uh, some of the stories of Elisha, and there's so many great stories uh, that you can pull so much practical application from, and so we're going to we're kind of going to blow through some of this. We'll read some, talk some, read some, talk some, uh, and then we'll uh, kind of end this thing out with some thoughts and uh, let any of you add anything that you have. Um, but we'll start in, in uh, we'll just start in chapter six, verse one here. We're in second Kings. Uh, now the sons of the prophet said to Elisha, see the place where we dwell under your charge is too small for us. There's already an issue, right? There's already a problem. Uh, let us go to the Jordan and each of us get their own log uh, or get go uh, get there a log and let us make a place for us to dwell there. And he answered, go. Right. So right off the bat, uh, Elisha's um, ministry had spread. He's got these uh, follower, these students, right, these mentees, these prophets that are following him, learning from him. And, and apparently it's spread so much and so many have come to him that they don't have enough room. Guys, how many of you would love to have that in your church, right? Um, you would love to have that where you are ministering or your business or whatever, right? That we have this problem. We got too many people that are too excited about what's going on and they want to be a part of this, right? Um, and so his, his, uh, sir, his sons of the prophets, right? These guys come to him and say, hey, we need a bigger place. Let us go and, and build it. And he's like, great, go, right? And then they asked him. The next verse, hey, then one of them said, be, uh, be pleased to go with your servants. And he answered, I'll go. So he went with them. Uh, so he went with them. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as, uh, as, as one was felling a log, his axe head fell into the water. He cried out, alas, my master, it was borrowed. And then the man of God said, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, he cut off a stick and threw it in there and made the iron float. And he said, take it up. So he reached out his hand and took it. All right. So 
uh, we've got an issue, um, right? There, here's the thing. Uh, life, we're going to have problems, right? But we should also look for, for provisions. Um, and so as we are dealing with life, right, uh, these guys were out there chopping down logs because they needed to build a bigger place so they could house more people. And this guy's ax head flies off and it goes into the water. And what does any normal person do? They throw a stick in the water to make uh, a iron ax head float, right? Because that's what you would do. Yeah. Any of you on the call would go, yeah, let's just throw a stick in the water and we're going to make this thing float, right? No, but yeah, that's Elisha, right? He's, he's always doing crazy things. So he, he throws this in here. Why was this a big deal? Uh, even though iron was common, um, somewhat, or I shouldn't say common, even though iron was available during this time, it wasn't common. And because it wasn't common, it was expensive. And this guy had borrowed it, right? And these guys are out here running around with Elisha. So I'm sure that, you know, probably stressed them out. Didn't probably have any funds to replace it. Couldn't go to Lowe's, right? And just buy something. And so um, he really needed to, to get that that iron axe head back. And so, um, so Elisha comes along and throws a stick in the water. What's interesting is, is Elisha doesn't just go pick it up, right? Um, he, he all, through all of this, you're gonna see him be the mentor, right? So he says, you know, take it up. He tells the guy, hey, go get it, right? So he has the guy go get it and be a part of the experience. All of us should always be uh, teaching, training up, discipling, right? That's something that I think we're told to do, right? We're supposed to be discipling and teaching and training and, and mentoring others uh, and bringing them alongside us. We get to do that inside of our training groups all the time, which is a blast. Um, and so that's, that's just a part of what Elisha did, which he just is replicating from what happened between Elijah and Elisha, right? Uh, which we won't go back into that story. All right, let's keep going. Once the king, uh, once when the king of Syria was warring against Israel, he took counsel with his servants, saying, At such and such a place shall be my camp. But the man of God sent uh, word to the king of Israel, Beware that you do not pass this place, for the Syrians are going down there. And the king of Israel sent to the place uh, about which the man of God told him. Thus he used uh, to warn him so that he uh, saved himself there more than once or twice. The mind of the king of Syria was greatly troubled because of this thing. He called his servants and said to them, will you not show me who of us is for the king of Israel, right? He thought he had a mole, right? One of the servants says, none, my Lord, uh, O king. But Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. And he said, go and see where he is that I may send and seize him. It was, I uh, told him, behold, he is in Dothan. Uh, so he sent their horses and chariots and a great army, and they came by night and surrounded the city. All right, so right off the bat, we see that Syria and Israel are in a wartime again, right? Um, this was going off and on, right? This has been going off and on, right? And so um, basically, the king's like, hey, I'm going to, the king of Syria, he's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get him, right? I'm going to get him. So he would tell his army, hey, let's go camp here. And then somehow the king of Israel would always go somewhere else, right? They would always go somewhere that the king of Syria's army wasn't, and that way they wouldn't get caught, they wouldn't get killed, right? War wouldn't, like, they wouldn't have to battle, right? And the king's, like, beside himself trying to figure out what is going on, right? So he brings his people in. He says, somebody's a mole. They're like, no, 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 no. The prophet Elisha is passing this information on. He knows, right? He knows what words have been spoken in your bedroom, right? The most private, intimate place um, that he could possibly share, right? And so let's just, let's kind of set on that for just a second. I hope this isn't real loud in y'all's ears. My wife is washing dishes and trying to do some stuff Sorry. here. Um, so I want to, I want to talk to you really quickly about how uh, nothing's hidden, right? Nothing's hidden from God. We talk about this, right? Um, as Christians, we talk about the fact that, that nothing's hidden. God knows everything, right? But, but isn't it weird that normally we're more terrified of other people knowing our secrets than the God of the universe. Uh, because if we're really terrified of the God of the universe knowing our secrets, right? Like y'all know where this is going. I don't have to finish that. Like it's just the way it works, right? But we're terrified of what other people um, might find out, 
right, about us, uh, about who we are, about our weaknesses. Um, we're, we're all broken, right? I mean, that's just a, just a part of the world. We live in a broken world. We're all broken. We all fall short. We, we all have those things in our lives that we're not proud of, right? And yet we're more terrified of somebody else finding that out than we are of, of God already knowing it. He already knows what's going on anyway, right? And so Elisha is God's inside man, and he's able to warn the army, right? He's able to warn the army. And so what does the king of Syria do? King of Syria is like, I'm going to put a hit out on this guy. If we go kill Elisha, then they won't know, and we can go trap the king of, of Israel, right? And so basically you've got um, the king of Syria going, okay, well, let's just go get him. Tell me where he is. And so they, they literally are, they're trying to say, if we go get this one earthly thing, right? This one, if we go do this one thing, we go, if we go get Elisha, we'll take care of the problem, right? And so they, he sends his army and they go out to this little, little town of Dothan and uh, surround it, right? And so that, that's kind of, you know, we don't really talk about this much, and especially with war and everything that's going on right now. Um, but it would basically be like going into like Dothan or Dothan was just a small little community. It's not like they had walls. It's not like like this. This is not somewhere that they're going to be really protected, right? And all of a sudden, you've got uh, Elisha and his mentee, his servant, his what right hand guy, right? Uh, out here surrounded by chariots surrounded by this army um and and that's kind of where we come into the story really what i want to kind of talk about today uh so verse um let's see where are we at let me scroll down here you'll notice they came by night right came by night surrounded the city when the servant of the man of god rose early in the morning and went out behold an army with horses and chariots was all around the city and the servant said alas my master what shall we do like he was freaked out right how many of you have found yourselves in a situation where it's hopeless right um we we've been there we've been there where things just didn't seem like they were going to work out uh we've been there financially We've been there, health issues. We've been there, um, jobs and careers. Like we're, we were surrounded and uh, things did not look good. We've been in situations, that, especially at churches, where we've had um, other ministers that had things that were going on that we didn't even know at the time um, that caused a lot of issues inside the church. And we weren't even aware, but we were, we were catching the flack from it, right? We were, we were, um, we were literally catching fire from some of these other things that were going on in the church that we didn't even realize what was causing it, but there was sin going on and there was other things going on that was creating these other issues, right? And some of y'all may feel that way now. You may feel trapped, stuck or whatever. And so the servant's like, what, what are we going to do, right? He's turning into Elisha going, man, there, there's, there's an army out here with our, like horses and chariots and we're surrounded and what are we going to do? Right? What are we going to do? And and like of all the things Elisha could say, he says, "What? Do not be afraid, uh, for those that are with us are more than those who are with them." The servant couldn't see at this point, right? Uh, but so many times, what do we do? We we end up fighting what we can see, right? We end up fighting the battle that we think is right in front of us, right? We we only see what we what we see at the time. And all the servant, all his, all that he saw at this point was this army. He had no idea. So if you were stuck in this situation, what would you want? Right? I'm sure that he's probably sitting there going, oh, thanks, Elisha. That's great. You and me, we're going to take this army on. Right? Uh, he, he's probably sitting there scared out of his mind, which is the way I would have been. Right? Scared of his mind because he's thinking, this is not what I'm planning right? I, I didn't plan on coming here and then getting surrounded by an army. And here, Elisha's going, well, don't be afraid, man. There's more with us than there are of them, right? But, but he can't see at this point. He doesn't realize really what's going on, right? So Elisha prayed, verse 17, Elisha prayed and said, oh Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. So the Lord opened the eyes of the young man 
and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha, right? What does fire represent so many times in Old Testament, right? Um, God, right? It represents this power, this authority, right? And so he prayed, opened the eyes of the servant, and the servant literally saw these chariots, these horses of fire surrounding this other army. And so many times, right, we're, we're fighting a battle against, what's, what's the verse say, right? We're fighting a battle against flesh and blood, when really that's not what we're fighting at all, right? And so many of the battles that we wage in our lives, the things that we struggle with, the things that we're, we're fighting for, especially in the chaotic, crazy world that we're in right now. Um, so many of the things that we're fighting against and fighting for, uh, we're fighting against um, flesh and blood. And so, you know, I would imagine at this point, before, before the servant's eyes were open, he probably thought Elisha was a little insane, right? Um, and was the threat real? Because in, in the servant's mind, all he saw was this army surrounding him. And was the threat real? Absolutely, the threat was real. But, but what he didn't really realize was that there was something else that was going on, right? And sometimes we're scared of things, right? We're afraid of things that, um, that seems real, but it's really not, it's really not harmful. And I'll give you an example. Uh, back when we were working uh, in Denton, um, our daughter was at the church one day and they were up there doing youth work or something. I don't know. And the, somebody had got a phone call. My wife worked up at the church. She was doing um, the books for them at the time. Somebody got a phone call and CPS was going to be coming to uh, one of the members house uh, that had a, had some kids and they were afraid that when they got to the house, that the condition of the house would cause them to have their, their kids taken away. And um, they weren't very, the parents weren't very uh, mobile and weren't able to really do what they need to do. So our, my daughter and the, the preacher there and some other kids and some other adults all loaded up and they went over to the house uh, to clean. And so they were out and cleaning and they were in the garage, I think, and they moved something and this big rat runs out. And the preacher like screams like a little girl and starts running around and my daughter's over there going not a big deal and she goes and just takes care of it and she gets a broom and literally whacks the the rat and ends up taking it right the threat seemed real but it really wasn't right and so many times in our lives we are in these these uh states where what we feel is what not always what's real right? What we feel is not always what's real. And so we feel like there's no hope, right? We feel like there's no way out. We feel like there's no end to whatever it is that we're dealing with right now, right? Uh, we feel like the army surrounded us, right? And we don't have anybody to fight for us, right? But, but a lot of times what we feel is not real. And the servant had to have his eyes opened. And what did he need? Uh, the servant really needed a new perspective. And so what did he do? He looked to his mentor and said, what are we going to do? Right? Some of you don't have mentors in your life. Um, some of you may be, especially for any of you that are in ministry right now, man, that is one of the hardest positions to be in. Because there's not very many ministers to ministers out there. And it can be an island. I've been there. And you don't feel like you can talk to anybody, share with anybody. You definitely don't want to share your struggles, right? You don't want to share the, the, the demons that you're having to fight too, right? And uh, inside our group, we, this is what's so cool about what's happened. Guys, look, I started all of this online junk to be able to go do ministry. What's really cool is ministry has found me inside of our group um we have a, a small group of men that won a little competition that we were doing a while back and i met with them for about a week we did this week-long thing and out of that has spurred one of those men in that group has been called to minister to ministers that's what he feels like that's like one of his main ministries that he does on top of other things that he's doing and so they meet regularly now and sometimes i'll get to hop in with them and meet with them but 
they meet and get poured into. And sometimes we need a mentor. We need somebody that we can turn to and be real with. I don't know if y'all have that person or persons in your life, um, but we need those types of people in our life, right? We need somebody that we can turn to and say, hey, let's, let's talk some real talk. I had a group of guys back when I was a youth minister in, in uh, Westgate in Abilene, and we would meet every Wednesday night and we would sit and talk for hours. And um, everybody would share real stuff. Like there were guys in there dealing with all kinds of things from pornography to uh, one of the guys was a college professor and he had a young lady that was crushing on him and he was trying to figure out how to deal with that. And others were having issues with marital issues and problems, you know, close to divorce. And others were like, others had issues with their kids and things that were going on, right? Like all of them were dealing with some stuff. And it was really neat to see how the group was able to, to kind of pray over each other and help each other and support each other, right? Uh, and so we, we need those mentors in our lives. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, where are we at here? Whoops, I went a little bit too far. All right, so uh, he sees that he sees that the servant sees the mountain was full of horses and chariots and fire, um, a fire all around him and Elisha, right? God's surrounding, right? And when the Syrians came down against him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, please strike this people with blindness. So he struck them with blindness in accordance with the prayer of Elisha. And Elisha said to them, this is not the way and this is not the city. Follow me and I will bring you uh, to the man whom you seek. And he led them to Samaria. All right, first of all, like when I first read this, I was thinking, well, that's weird. How, if you struck a whole group of people with chariots and horses and all that truly blind, right? How are they going to travel? Like we're talking, this was a three hour, 12 mile ride or hike from where they were at over to Samaria, right? So, uh, you know, really what he did is he, he, he struck him with blindness, almost in the sense of what the servant had, right? Where he couldn't see, he couldn't, he didn't realize who, he didn't realize the guy he was, they were looking for was really the guy that was leading them, right? They didn't realize what was actually happening at the time cool part right is uh, we've got a god that can can do what's needed at the moment or at the time right and so he tells them hey this is not the way this is not where this guy's at right but i'm going to take you to him right i'm going to take you to samaria and and i'm gonna i'm gonna take you to him so as soon as they entered samaria elisha said oh lord open the eyes of these men uh, that they may see so the lord opened their eyes and they saw and behold they were in the midst of samaria uh, as soon as the king of Israel saw them, he said to Elisha, my father, shall I strike them down? Shall I strike them down? And he answered, you shall not strike them down. Would you strike down those whom you have taken captive with your sword and with your bow, set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go to their master. So he prepared for them a great feast. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away and they went to their master. The Syrians did not come again on raids into the land of Israel all because of what had happened, right? And so we see this crazy thing, right? We see the servant is basically blind, and then his eyes are open to what's really going on, the spiritual battle that's happening right in front of him. The fact that he has the power, the might of God literally surrounding this other army, he has nothing to worry about. And then we have, on the opposite side of that, we have Elisha blinding these... Um, this army, bringing them into Samaria, where the king of Israel and the army is, right? Bringing them right into the midst of the enemy. The king of Israel sitting there going, should I kill him? Should I just kill them all? <laughs> right? Should we just take them out? And, and Elisha's like, no, no, we're going to feed them. We're going to feed them, and we're going to love on them, and we're going to bless them, and then we're going to send them on their way. And because of what he did, right? Because he did what he did, uh, they literally were, um, they really, they stopped the raids. They stopped what was going on, right? And so as you're kind of thinking about this, right, we, we read in scripture all the time about how um, in, in so many, man, there's so many things that we can talk about references here, right? About people that were blind, uh, that saw, right? The guy at the cross, right? Surely, surely this is the son of God after he had seen everything that he saw, right? So many times through scripture, we see this. Now, what's crazy is, is only a couple of times in all of scripture 
do we have something like what happened with Elisha and the servant where the, his eyes had been opened where he could actually see the army of God and we, he could see the fire, right? He could see the chariots and the horses uh, of fire and he could see what was actually happening in front of him. We don't see that very often, right? But at the same time, if, if you think about it, like, un, like when we're unbelievers, right? Scripture talks about, right? How we don't really understand everything until the spirit comes involved, right? There are things about all of this where we have these blind spots in our lives. Um, there's only one other time that Dothan is actually mentioned in scripture, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. You guys can go look for it yourself. It's a very interesting story, another Old Testament story. Um, but I want you to think about the fact that um, they, they literally brought them in. They were surrounded, right? And instead of killing them, he fed them, um, and he blessed them. Uh, and so, look, we all have this stuff in our lives, right? Like, if you've, if you've actually searched me online, there are people lying about me, what I've done in the past. Like, people can say anything they want to online. I've learned that. Like, if you want to learn about how cruel people are, start running ads of yourself online and spreading your stuff. Seriously. Like, I don't care what you try to run ads for. I, I don't care if you're just trying to be helpful and you run a homeless ministry in your backyard. You're going to get people that are going to just trash you and lie about you and talk about you. Like, it's just the way it works. Like there are sites, literally competitive, like these are all competitors, by the way. There are competitors out there that have built sites about me that have just flat out lied. And, and they just have planted little seeds of doubt because they want to and because they can. And the reason they're doing it is to make money because they want you to buy their product. That's the only reason, but they can do it, right? We all have these things in life where, um, like, can I just be really brutally honest for a minute? Like there are times when I want to do the same thing the king of Israel said. Let's just go, just let's just go take them out. Right? That's how sometimes we feel about people that are attacking us or people that are hurting us, right? And yet Elisha goes, no, 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 no. Let's just let's just feed them. And and not only did he feed them, but did you did you catch what he said? He he literally said a great feast. They prepared a great feast for them, and they sat and they ate together. Look, um, the, I'll give you the example. The people that I'm talking about that have built these sites and are saying a bunch of garbage online, it's, none of it's true, but they can say what they want. That's the bad part about online. You can like, And people believe it. That's what's crazy. Um, you can say anything you want online, right? Any of those people that showed up today at my house, guess what I'd do? Like if any of y'all that, some of y'all have met me, and you know me, like I would just, I would do exactly what they did. We'd sit down and we'd have a meal and we would talk about life. That's what we do. Like, um, that's just who I am. And that's who I will always be. And there are people that have told me, Hey, you need to go chase these guys and go after them and rebut all that junk. And I'm like, nah, God's got it. I don't have to fight against that garbage. Like God's going to bring the people that need to be in our program in our program. This is the way it works. And, and the people that believe that stuff and buy into that stuff probably don't need to be in our program. They're probably not people that I would probably want in there anyway. Um, and so I, I, we're looking for servant-minded people, right? People that are wanting to, to give and do all that. And you, you look through scripture, guys, there's all of these things that happen. And yet, it, if, if we could really see Right. If we could really open our eyes and see, what would we see? The army of God was already there. It wasn't that the army of God wasn't there, and then all of a sudden it miraculously it like appeared. Right? No, the army of God was already there. The servant just couldn't see it. Elisha already saw it. I mean, how cool would it be to go around and be able to see? Like, I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't be. Maybe that'd be frightening. But how cool would that be to be able to like walk outside and Elisha be surrounded by this? this army and then go and eh, no big deal he's sitting over here sipping his latte right <laughs> it would do y'all realize what this would like this would be like some little small city and tanks and blackhawks are staring at you that's what it would feel like right there's some people in our world dealing with that kind of stuff right now 
luckily in America, I mean, for, from the time I've been alive, right, we don't know what's going to happen in the future, but up till now, I never had to deal with anything even remotely close to that. Nobody's ever been out after me. I've almost done some stupid things myself. <laughs> almost got myself in trouble a few times, but nobody's ever came after me, right? And so I, I think as you look at this, like, what are you not seeing that's already there? Right? What are you what are you blinded to in your life right now? What are the blind spots right now that you can't see? Where is the power of God, the authority of God? Where is the army of God surrounding your enemies right now that you don't even see it? Right? How cool is that to know? Right? That that God wants the best for his children. That he wants the best for his children, that he wants to bless us in ways like I think about how much I love my daughter and I'll do anything for her. And, and that's just a, that's just a tiny comparison to what God's love is for you and me. Right. And what he wants for us. Eight years ago, I would have thought, no, nah, there's no way to do this. There's no way to do what we do today where we get to go travel and serve and give and, Guys, we've been able to bless some really cool places and people. And um, we, we do this thing where my dad, uh, for years, when, especially when we were broke, he, he even did this for the grandkids and stuff. People would come to see him. Like, we'd come into town to see my dad, and he'd slip us a $100 bill. Now, my mom never knew because if mom would have known. She'd probably been mad at him. But dad always did this. He'd always slip these $100 bills to us. And it would pay for gas and help with, you know, whatever else. And sometimes it was like how we got home. Sometimes it literally was how we paid for the trip. But that's what dad always did for us. And a little while back, Michelle said, why don't we just start doing that? Why don't we just start blessing people with $100 bills? Just, you know, when God calls us to do it. Like when, so we carry $100 bills with us just to give away. And it's the coolest experience ever. When you're like the other day, we were sitting in a restaurant. We went to. I don't know if y'all have ever eaten it. We're in Branson. There's tons of places to eat. And so we were down at Paula Deen's and we were eating. Uh, we wanted to try it. We'd never eaten there. It was okay. It wasn't anything. The, the What is it? Ooey gooey butter, butter cake? cake? Oh my goodness. That stuff's addictive. I, I couldn't have that stuff anywhere near me. But um, we had this young lady that was waiting on us and we're sitting there talking with her and um, she had done an okay job. Wasn't a, wasn't a great waitress but she did an okay job for us. And at the end of the, yeah, she's super friendly, you know, and at the end of the, the, um, I guess she got kind of to her lunch hour. So she kind of disappeared for a little bit. Somebody else waited, excuse me, waited on us. And then she came back. And um, so we're sitting there talking to her and, and uh, we, we were telling her that we were in Branson because we're here for health issues. And then we're seeing a doctor here, but we're looking for places to serve. And we were um, trying to do some things for the College of the Ozarks and blah, blah, blah. And she mentioned something about that. And it, and then it, somehow it came out that we had done ministry work. And she was like, oh, like that you could see the flash in her eyes. And she said, well, I'm, I'm at Camp Canacook here. And some of y'all probably know the camp, like it's huge. Um, she's here on a gap year doing their study program to teach about discipleship. And she's not sure where she's heading after this. She may go back to Vegas or whatever. And so we had this big, long conversation. And Michelle looked at me. She goes, yeah, this is the one. And so she, like the girl left, went off to do whatever. And Michelle pulls out a $100 bill and hands it to me. And she said, um, the little girl came back. And I think we had paid or something. I don't even know. And, and we handed her the $100 bill. And you would have thought we'd handed her the world. Well, girl just almost start bawling, right? Because that was a ton of money for her right now. She's trying to figure out how to pay for everything she's doing and all the stuff that she's doing. And, and it's just ways for us to bless people. And I don't say that to brag or any of that. I say that to say, it's an amazing feeling when you create the life that you want and you have abundance because there's abundance everywhere. You have abundance to be able to just go bless people. And I'd never felt that before, not with finances. We had done it with our time. We'd done it with our gifts that God's given us. Like we had, man, I, my wife and I love working with kids and families. 
And I, my wife has got a gift to work it. Like she'll pick the hardest kid out of the whole place. And that's the one she seems to be attracted to. Yeah. She's telling me she doesn't pick them, but that's what happens. Like she gets like, it's like radar, man. It's like, she picks the hardest kid and boom, she goes to that kid. And that's who she goes. And like, I don't know why, and, but that's who she goes. And that's who she's, that's the way God made her. And it's cool to watch her like get through those walls and break down that stuff to where she starts to, to see that. And guys, how many blind spots do we have in our lives where we're not seeing ways for us to be able to go and do these things, right? To be able to go give and serve and do. I mentioned to somebody the other day about, um, uh, we're doing a bless to be a blessing thing inside of our group. We've been, where we just did it. We're probably gonna do another one soon where I just asked to invite everybody, go find a ministry or a nonprofit to go bless. Uh, teach, you know, maybe use your skill set, go teach them, go do whatever, right? Um, because the skill set that we have allows you to fundraise and allows you to, to get more eyeballs on whatever the ministry is to be able to help bring more people in, more donors, more people to volunteer, more people to maybe need the services, right? Whatever it may be. Um, and so, uh, it was pretty cool. We were talking about all these different things that were happening. And this guy had said, I, I mentioned to this guy, hey, we need to, one of the things that I would encourage you to do, he's a minister at a church. I said, one of the things I'd encourage you to do is to do a business workshop at your church and to teach some of the stuff that you're learning inside the program. And he's like, yeah, man, I, I need to go talk to, I, I know a guy that I go talk to and we could talk about it. And I was like, no, 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 no. I said, you just need to go do it. And he was like, yeah, I do, don't I? Because so many times we like, we just want to go talk about it or we want to go plan it or we want to go discuss it. But in reality, we just need to go do it. Um, how many times has that army been there and you just haven't seen it, right? Um, we used to talk about all the time on our campus at the Children's Home. I used to tell my staff, we want to ooze God everywhere. Like it, it, those kids, as they're watching you live your life, because those kids, they're blinded to love and care, and they're blinded to God. They're blinded to all those things when they come in because they've been abused and hurt. Someone had been trafficked. Someone had been homeless. And I was like, I want you to ooze God everywhere. I, I want those kids to, there should not be a time of the day that they don't know that you love them and that God loves them. And so it was really cool to watch as these kids, whether it was playtime or study time or school or an event that we were doing or whatever it was that we were doing, that these kids didn't get to see these house parents living out their Christian walk. And that was the good and the bad too, right? Because they needed to be real with them. They need to be real when things weren't good. And so what blind spots do you have in your life right now? Because I can tell you one huge blind spot you probably have and that's the same blind spot I had is I'd come out of ministry for, for 17 years. We were broke. We had to borrow money to move. We had to borrow money to start a business. Like we had to start completely over at 40, 40 years old. And I'm asking my dad, can I borrow money so I can move my family? Guys, that is a, you're talking about a hit to your pride, right? But I didn't know what else to do. I just had to do what I had to do. Right. And so dad was, of course, my dad's love language was always helping. That's just, that's just who he was. He's like, yeah, no problem. Like money was in our account the next day and we're packed up and we're moving to Denton, Texas and starting over. And I, I'll tell you a blind spot that I, I'm almost guarantee I've taught thousands of students now online and almost all of them have this blind spot about abundance, but there's truly an abundance out there. There's no lack of money. There's no lack of resources. There just isn't. You may think there is, but there's really not. Like, um, I just post, I post in our group almost every week. On Fridays, I post, hey, anybody closed any deals this week? And one guy said, yeah, just close a $2,800 deal plus a percentage. Another guy was like, close $3,500 worth of websites. Another guy, like, guys, I was talking to one of our guys. I don't think he's on the call today. He might be. I was talking to one of our students yesterday that I've known for years and years and years, way back before we ever did any of this stuff. We knew each other through ministry work. And um, his preacher didn't even realize he was doing this. He's a youth minister full-time. 
And uh, he's kind of kept it separate. He wanted to keep it all separate and he didn't really want to make it a big deal at the church or any of that. He wanted to do it on his own outside of that um, where he could just kind of have it as, you know, just something as just his over here without having to bother any of the church folk or do any of that. And as <laughs> the preacher, you know, we're talking and he said, uh, he said, so how long have you been doing this? He said, well, I've been doing it since February last year. And he goes, seriously, I didn't even know you were doing it. He goes, yeah. He said, I'm, manage my time really good it doesn't you know conflict at all and i don't bring it into the church or any of that stuff and he goes so have you made like you know have you maybe made 10 15 percent of your your salary now like are you getting you know some of that some of that money coming in he goes i've doubled my salary since i started this and he said i'll probably triple it or quadruple it soon and the preacher almost fell over and it's because there was an abundance it, it it's not a lack of Guys, it's just finding the right vehicle, learning it enough where you know what you're doing, and then going and putting it to work. That's all it is. And that abundance will allow you to create the life you want. And that's a blind spot that I had for years and years and years. I always thought, well, I got to go to the eight to five job. I can only do ministry if I work there because I'm not going to have enough money to be able to go do it otherwise. Um, like, that's so not true at all. It's just not. We've, we've had months in our business where we've done $100,000 of profit, not gross, profit, like money that we put into our bank account. Like, I never even felt that. Like, I never even made $100,000 $100, in a year, much less in a month, right? And so um, I want to make sure today that you look at those blind spots in your life, right? That you're paying attention to where God's working, that you're praying for God to open your eyes to where he's working and what he's doing. That you're praying for those people that are the, the, right, the king of Syria, the army that's coming and surrounding you. And that hopefully you're blessing them. You know, what's crazy, uh, back when we started Digital Storefronts, um, these other guys that are building these sites and doing all this mess, uh, they were really attacking me online. Like attacking me, attacking my family. And um, there were people, some of my network that were like, man, we, we need to take care of this. And I'm like, no, let's just pray for them. Man, there's, if, if they're that mad and that angry about the fact that I just went off to go help ministers and servants and other people that want to do this online, then something's wrong. And I can't imagine the damage that's doing to their household and their little kids and the marriage and the family. Let's just pray for them. And guys, we we need to do that, right? We need to we need to bless them, and we need to pray for them, and um, we need to make sure that we're doing what we can do to make sure that we're living a life of integrity and living right, right? All right. Let's let's stop there because I know there's a ton of you that have made comments here. <clears throat> Yeah, he's teaching me patience right now. Yeah, other thoughts, other people want to jump in. What if anything that stuck out to you today from what we've what we've just looked at? Anything stuck out to you that didn't stick out um, and something that I had mentioned? Yeah, Tyson says, God's always in a position to care for his people that goes way beyond invisible. That's right. Elisha did two cool things. He gets his servant's eyes on God's provision for him. Absolutely. He instructs the Israelites to compete with the natural response to fulfill uh, the co yeah, covenant of blessing. Absolutely. Then to see his reality repeated in Ephesians 1. Yeah. Guys, look. Like Elisha's life was just a, a shadow, right? Of Jesus. Like it's just, the, it's a shadow of what's to come, right? Elisha did all of these really cool um, miracles and all this crazy stuff, right? It's, Man, if you haven't studied it, great study. Compare the two lives. Compare what Elisha did to what Jesus did. Very cool study. Very, very cool study. And we didn't even really talk about this, but like when, when you do what God has gifted you to do, what do you think is going to happen? Right? What do you think is going to happen? Because when Elisha did what God gifted him to do, what happened? He had armies coming after him. Like, 
let's talk about the reality of what it is to follow Christ, right? If we're truly going to do what we're called to do, we're going to run into the enemy. He would rather you just be busy. He'd rather you be distracted. He'd rather you be doing whatever it is that you're not really supposed to be doing, right? But when we're called to do what we're given, the gifts we're given to do, just like Elisha was. Look at any of the prophets. Guys beat up, left in the ditch, right? Like, look at the apostles. I mean, come on. You do look anywhere in scripture when somebody did what they were called to do. Like, it's, it's going to happen. You're going to have people, um, you're going to have things attacking you. It's, it's just, it's a part of it, right? Uh, Mark said, what struck me is how many times uh, do we not pray with belief for God to show us the armies that are for us? Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, and we don't, you know, it's not even something we really think about, right? It's not even something that we really even go, man, God, show me. Show me where, show me where you're surrounding whatever this is that I'm struggling with right now. The health issues, the financial issues, the family issues, the kid issues, right? Um, man, I, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, if Satan can tempt you to, to sin, he will waste your time. Absolutely. We would rather believe that there are not angel armies on our behalf than believe that there are. And that goes back to this idea of um, right at the very beginning, right? We talked about the uh, this whole idea that, that, man, we just have these blind spots. And, and the fact that the fact that Elisha knew what was, <laughs> the fact that he knew what was being said in the bedroom, that should scare the snot out of us, right? In, in a good way. That should tell us, like, we serve, that's the God we serve, right? That he's all-powerful, all-knowing, right? That, that he's got our back. Now, here's the deal. Uh, and let's let's talk about this real quick. Um, at the very beginning of that story, they had a problem, right? Elisha had started his ministry. He had some guys coming. And then, boom, they didn't have enough room. Um, you know, we talk about all the time about goal setting and all that stuff inside of our, our um, business. If you guys are like health nuts, right, you're setting goals of, you know, what you want to weigh or what you, you know, your body fat percentage or I don't know, whatever right? We, we set goals all the time. Guys, how many times, like, you're, you're, let's say you're three years into your last five-year plan that you <laughs> created. How many times does it ever go the way that you think it's going to go? Right? I mean, come on. It just doesn't. It's not life, right? It's not life. And so we, we do need to plan, and we need to have goals, but, but we also need to understand that there are bigger things at work here. Right. And that when we start something, uh, we may struggle for a while. The guy that I was talking about earlier, the youth minister that's doubled his salary now and doing all that on the side, he, he's about to hit summertime. And for any of you guys that are doing youth ministry, I'm praying for you. Like summertime is like, like it's you're away from your family for seven, eight weeks. You're out on the road doing mission trips and camps and retreats and service projects and you're with kids at the church and you're with families doing family activities and right. Like he knows that over the summer, he, he's going to have to ratchet back his time in his business. The cool part about it is the business doesn't stop. That's the cool part about it. He can just keep like the business is just going to keep chugging all summer long while he's off doing his ministry work, which is why I got into this in the first place. Right. And so um, when he started, he started in February, but he'll tell you, like, if you sit down with him, he'll tell you, I went through the course and all that, but he said it didn't really start until August or September because he's kind of started learning and he kind of got into it a little bit and then summer hit. And then he was out doing ministry work all summer. And then he got back from that, got a little bit of a rest, and then he hit it hard. And then I can tell you, there were weeks and weeks where he would write because we're, like I say, we're friends. We've known each other for years. He'd write me and go, dude, I, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I'm ever going to make any money and get my money back. I'm like, yeah, you will. Just stick with it, right? Sometimes you need to turn to a mentor 
just like the servant did. He couldn't see what he couldn't see. I knew that if he just kept working, I tell our students this all the time, if you'll just keep after it, I knew what they couldn't see is that it will turn. And when it does turn, you better be ready. You better be holding on. And when it turned, we met one time. He won this 30 minute thing that we did a competition for. We met one time, met for 30 minutes. That next week he closed four deals, three or four deals. And, and from then he's been fighting to try to keep up. And I told him, like, I told him like, it's just a matter of you going at this long and hard enough that you are committed to it and persistent with it and then it'll grow, right? But that wasn't his plan. His game plan was when he started was, man, I'm going to go blow this thing up so that we can get to here and do this and go this, right? That's not how it worked. Like he spent weeks and weeks and weeks busting his hump, talking to people and prospecting and trying to close deals and building sites and doing stuff. And, and it wasn't paying off. And then all of a sudden, bam, 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 bam. Like it just took off. I knew that because I'd already been there and I've seen it happen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, but he didn't know that he didn't know what he didn't know. Right. You guys need to make sure that you have mentors in your life. Like when I want to go, I, I've been trying to get back in shape. I'd love to play basketball again, man. I love playing basketball as a kid. And uh, I quit playing when we were at children's home because I blew my knee out and I haven't really been able to play much since. I, every once in a while, I'll go shoot around. I'd love to get back there. If I'm going to get back to doing that, I, I'm probably going to have to hire a coach, right? So I hired a coach. He worked with me for a long time last year. Guys, I was doing great until I threw my back out, trying to lift my dad off the floor a couple of times over a weekend. And then I just kind of threw everything out of whack, right? Life's going to happen. That wasn't the plan. That wasn't the plan for Elisha and his followers to have to go build a new place to house everybody, right? Good problem to have but it wasn't the plan. So when your plan doesn't always work out, that's okay. Like it's probably not going to. And we gotta be okay with that, right? We gotta be okay with that. Um, okay. Uh, let me see here. I know there was some other stuff here. Uh, Allison saying super scary time when we walked away. And Allison, I, she and I actually ate um, a meal together. We actually sat down and ate and broke bread together at the last event we had. She was at our table. Uh, walked away from a comfortable income. She worked forever as a, um, uh, as a, um, I am totally blank right now. I can see it. Park ranger. Um, and, and walked away from that career because she knew that there had to be something more. Um, she's still working to be, get back on her feet. Truly humble. Yeah, I've been there. I've done it. Uh, often I don't know what to pray for or what to ask for that will help my situation. Blindness is all uh, he knew to ask. Never did he think of what he was really need. Yeah, yeah, God does. Yeah, yeah. And then that crazy, like, like uh, Elisha knew exactly what to pray for for the servant, but the servant didn't know what to pray for. Servant didn't even realize it was there, but it was there the whole time, right? It was there the whole time. Uh, God never failed to provide through 40 years of ministry. Stress about retirement the whole time, finally made it. Well, I said, yeah. Yeah, Walt and his wife are involved, guys, and he's he's retired, man. He's trying to get more income coming in and for them to be able to go do more ministry. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. David never really knew Goliath's strength because he was too focused on God's. Absolutely. Yeah, proud time, great meal. Love it. Yeah, guys, look, I mean, bottom line is, is we all have blind spots. Uh, before we started in our RV lifestyle, uh, my wife and I thought, let's go rent an RV because uh, we'd never been out and done this kind of thing. And so we we went through, um, I don't know, whatever that RV rental service thing is. And we rented this 30-something foot motor home thinking, man, this is going to be fun. And I, I was speaking in Vegas at a big marketing event in front of, I don't know, 300 plus marketers. And so we... Um, <laughs> We hopped in the RV. I never drove anything by this, by the way. We hopped in the RV, took off. I drove it back home. I was scared to death the whole time, right? Got it back home about two hours away from where we picked it up. And then we took off to head to Vegas. On the way to Vegas, we stopped off uh, in Arizona at Flagstaff. And where we camped and where we had to park was not uh, level. And I couldn't get the level. I didn't know what I was doing. 
I couldn't get the the coach leveled. And so um, we, we needed to pull out of the spot and move. And so I'm fo like, there's a truck right here to my right. And there's a trailer right across from us. And it was a little bitty skinny road. And I'm focused on not hitting the trailer. My wife's trying to help me not hit the truck. What we had forgot is the tree that was back here. And when you turn an RV, what does it do? It swings. And so the butt of that RV swung around and all of a sudden I feel this bam. And I hear in the RV, like I slam on the brakes and I'm thinking what in the world did I just hit in a borrowed RV that I rented. Uh, and we'd only been in it for like two or three days. Uh, it was not a fun experience. And so anyway, I had scratched the whole back end of this thing up and having to pay to get it fixed, but it like, it was a blind spot, right? I thought I had had everything seen. The tree is always there. The tree didn't, it was like all of a sudden, poof, there's a tree, right? The tree was always there. I just didn't see what I didn't know, right, was there. And sometimes what we feel isn't really what's real. And that's where I think a lot of times we get in life. We feel the stress, we feel the pressure, we feel... All of those things, um, when in reality, we have a God that's bigger than those things. We have a God that's surrounding those armies. We have a God that's for us because there's more that's for us, right, than are against us. And so that's, that's what I wanted to focus on today. I hope that this has helped you. I hope you got something out of today. Uh, this is fun for me. This is something I don't get to do a whole lot anymore. Um, just because of time doing other things, got too many other irons in the fire. Um, but would love to have any of you guys, like if you, if you want to uh, get on these calls, make sure and stay inside the, the groups that we're in. I'll have another, I, I'll do probably one of these a month, kind of what we've got planned right now. And then uh, uh, probably be on like the third or fourth Friday, depending on how the month lays out, uh, like this on a Friday afternoon. Uh, I know a lot of people can't, Join. So if there are people that can't join, always remember these are recorded and then they'll be dropped back into the, uh, the group. So uh, I know some of you are looking, at, some of you are invited by some of our advisors to just come and experience um, this crazy bald guy. And so hopefully today uh, you've experienced who I am. This is just what you see is what you get, guys. Like this is just who I am. And so um if this is if this is something that resonates with you i can guarantee you would you would love to be a part of our family we'd love to have you as a part of our family um uh, to be a part of what we're doing and how we're doing it so i, I don't want to take too much more of your time i know we're after three already uh, i know you guys have things probably to do on a friday um just uh, today uh I, I pray that you your eyes are opened right that, that we can truly see what really is going on, that our battle is not against people, right? That chasing after Elisha, the king wouldn't have got what he wanted. Even if he'd have killed Elisha, he still wouldn't have got what he wanted, but he thought he would. And yet so many times we chase after a thing, right? Or a person or whatever. Guys, this business is just a tool. That's all it is. It's a tool for me to be able to do ministry with. And it allows me and affords me to be able to do stuff like what I'm doing today. And so um, I, I hope that you find whatever it is that you need to be able to move through whatever that army or that battle or whatever it is that you're fighting right now and dealing with. And some of you, you may be seeing the, the army of the Lord and you're like, man, I'm all in. Let's go. Right? Let's go. Whether you're whether it's just life or whether you're wanting to go bless people or whether you're wanting to go on the road like us or whatever it may be. So I hope you find that today. You guys have a blessed Friday, have a blessed weekend, and um, definitely let us know if there's anything that we can do for you or any way we can help you. Um, but uh, just, wanted to, just wanted to help you today, maybe hopefully clean up some blind spots. Y'all have a blessed one, and I will see you guys inside the groups.